There are only two types of waves. You've got your transverse wave that actually is, well, you know, a, a wave on a rope is doing things like this. Transverse waves look like that. And the other type of wave we've got is an interesting type. Let's see, I guess this is position versus position, right? So we could take a photograph of a transverse wave. If we take a photograph of a longitudinal wave, a photograph of a longitudinal wave would actually look very interesting. A longitudinal wave, for instance, would be a sound wave. A longitudinal wave is where stuff gets bunched up and then stuff gets spread back out again. And it gets bunched up and then spread back out again. I could also get a longitudinal wave if you had a slinky. Let me draw you a slinky. This is a quick sketch of a slinky. If you take a slinky and you push it forward and back really rapidly, go forward and back. So then this wave pulse will travel through the slinky shh, like this. And we can see a longitudinal wave like this. I'm gonna try to draw it getting denser and then spreading out and then getting denser and then spreading out. That's a longitudinal wave photograph. So you don't really have much in the way of, um, it's not exactly position versus position, it's kind of like position versus position. I'll put quotes around this. It's kind of, uh, you know, ish. <clears throat> but another way we have a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. And so if I beat a drum, for instance, or hit a table, boom, I cause the surface of the table to move forward and then back, and it hits the medium, that's this slinky in this picture right here, and the medium and sound is air or whatever substance it's going through, and it causes a, a densening and a rarefaction, a compression and a rarefaction. Mm, let's label these suckers right here. Mm -hmm -hmm. Here's a nice long word for you. Rarefaction. All my English language learners will be pretty excited to know that this word is very seldom used, but here it is, a rarefaction, and here's a compression. So instead, I could actually draw this wave as a graph of density. Longitudinal waves are kind of cute like that. So we could say, instead of um, position versus position, I could say density. Check this out, density versus position. And in that case, I'd have to say that the density is large, the density is large here, and the density is very small here, and the density is very large here, and the density is very small here. So I don't mean that the density is actually zero when I'm at my axis. I mean that the density is average average density, and here I'm talking about minimum density, and here I'm talking about maximum density. So uh, really, longitudinal waves are about deviation from normal. Notice this spring here. This was my unwaved spring, but the compression is denser than the average, and the rarefaction is I guess less dense than the average. So that's how we can see a longitudinal wave in actual life. There's a third type of wave that's a combination of these two. Uh, and by analogy, I'll show you, um, here are two things that are called orthogonal to each other. They're the y and x axes. But you can make something that's not just in x or just in y. Watch this, Watch, this is pretty fancy. There, look at that vector, it's not an x and it's not in Y, but it's a little bit in X and a little bit in Y. And water waves are the analogy of this. If you consider a water wave, not only is the water wave taking something, riding it up and down, mm -hmm -hmm. if you are in a very small boat on a water wave, then you'll find that your boat is going up and down and it's going forward and back. So you're doing kind of a circular motion, which is actually a linear combination of transverse wave and longitudinal wave at the same time. So that's pretty beautiful. But in general, there are those two types of waves. That's it.